Hi there. After spending time with entrepreneurs, particularly social entrepreneurs, I want to tell you the five qualities that I've seen that actually makes a true social enterprise leader. What are those five qualities? So today in this broadcast, we're going to be looking into what those five qualities are. It might probably take us about 10 or 15 minutes for us to do so. Now, let's get started. What are the five qualities that I think makes a true social enterprise? In other words, if you want to succeed as a social enterprise leader, what are the five qualities that you actually need to cultivate? Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Bumi Tokon, and if you know about me, you know we run an organization called the School of Social Sustainability, as well as Start Your Own Business Academy. Thanks for joining us live on Facebook and also live on YouTube today. So, what is the first quality that you need to develop as a leader? A true social enterprise leader is one that is passionate. And when I talk about passionate, I mean that person has a desire to change the lives of those they want to impact. So they have chosen a, a specific group of people that they actually want to affect. So for example, let's say you want to work with people who have autism, for example, or you want to work with uh, women who have been abused domestically, or you want to work with the elderly, or you want to work with even other social enterprises like we do, because my passion and our passion in our organization is to help social enterprises achieve success over a long haul, to make them sustainable over a long haul. We're passionate about that. And all, everything we do, our drive is towards that direction. So you've got to be passionate. There's no point just picking uh, a target group that you're not really interested in. Maybe, oh, there's money being made now for the refugees. So let's set up a social enterprise for refugees so that we can get a lot of grant funding that way. Well, that's not going to work in the long term. It may work in the short term, but not in the, work term, in the long term. So when I say, well, let's do a project for the youth because there's a lot of grant funding for youth projects. So let's get involved in that. Let's go set up a social enterprise for that. But you're going to discover that it won't work for the long term. You've got to be passionate about something. Or you might look at the SDG goals and say, well, the Sustainable Development Goals by the UN, there's 17 of them. You might say, well, I'm really passionate about changing the climate. Or I'm really passionate about equality. I'm really passionate about poverty. Whatever it is, you can choose one of those sustainable goals and make it your passion. That's the first thing that's going to make you a true leader because people are going to be able to suss you out when they find out that you're not really passionate about nothing. All you're passionate about is yourself or whatever. But you need to choose the group of people that you want to impact. And you've got to be passionate about that group. That's something I observe with other successful social enterprise leaders. The second thing, and a lot of people tend to ignore this one. The second um, character trait you need to develop is a character trait that is business-minded. Oh, yeah, <laughs> business-minded. Because actually, a true social enterprise earns over 50% of their income from trading. A true social enterprise. So if you're not doing that, perhaps you're really a charity instead of a social enterprise. But if you call yourself a social enterprise, which means an organization that has social, that is geared towards uh, providing a social activities or a social impact, plus they are an enterprise, they're trading. So you're gonna develop your passion for trading. Many, some social enterprises or leaders, new leaders, particularly those who are just starting out, they tend to ignore that and focus on the social aspect and just somehow hope everything will be well. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You're going to be business-minded. What are you going to sell? What part of your process or products or services are you actually going to sell for an income? You know, if you have any difficulty in this or if you misunderstand what I'm saying, please put your comments in the, in the chat box and someone will pick it up for you. But the point I'm making is this. You've got to be trading at least 
50% of your income should come from actually trading activities. So it's important for you to develop your business mindset. You might need to go on a course that helps you to understand how to run a business. <laughs> That's actually true because at the end of the day, a social enterprise is actually a business that has a social purpose. It's a business with purpose. It's not a business just to make money. It's about doing good and also doing well. The doing good bit is the social part. The doing well part of it is the enterprise part and both merge together. Or you can talk about the triple bottom line, which is people, you watch over people, you ensure that they enjoy working for you, then you look after the planet. So it's people, planet and profit. And somebody else adds something else to it. They say people, planet, profit, peace, and prosperity, and partnership. <laughs> so the peace does seem to extend. But most people focus on the triple bottom line. Your organization is a triple bottom line business as a social enterprise. Therefore, you've got to be business minded. There's no escaping that. If you truly want to do well, you're going to be able to sell some of your services. So that area needs to be developed. And I've seen that true social enterprise leaders are business minded leaders. The third aspect of the character traits you need to develop, you and I need to develop over a long term is to be innovative. That means to be creative is to have innovation at the heart of everything we do. How are you being innovative? How are you trying to change the, the direction of your service delivery? How are you trying to make it faster? How are you trying to make it better? How are you trying to ensure that you, are, you have a process that is creative in nature? I'm going to be thinking, how are, we going to, how are we going to deliver our services better? Can I include some form of uh, technology that would quicken the process of delivery or that would change our delivery that would ensure that our beneficiaries can report back to us in real time or can I implement certain types of development that will ensure we even make more money, reduce cost, reduce uh, uh, carbon emission, reduce our carbon footprint, Whatever it is, you've got to be thinking in an innovative manner. So some organizations will tell you that they are bringing in uh, old clothing and they're creating new clothing out of it. Or some organizations are thinking about a circular economy whereby there is uh, the aspect of recycling, reuse, repair. Uh, you know, it's all part of the creative, innovative processes that needs to be included in your business, in your social enterprise. And I use the word in your business deliberately because I want to shock some people who always look at a social enterprise from the social end only. But I've dealt with that. The point I'm making is this. You've got to be thinking about being more innovative. A true social enterprise leader is one that innovates all the time. All right. What's the fourth a character trait you need to develop as a leader. A social enterprise leader, one of the qualities, one of the five qualities of a true social enterprise leader is one who thinks about building an A-team. It's an A-team builder. What is an A-team builder? It's someone who is conscious of the needs for complementary skills. Somebody conscious of the need for complementary skills, which means that you're always thinking, Okay, what are the aspects of our business? For example, I think I read somewhere years ago now that talks about a uh, business is has a sales aspect of it. It's got a marketing aspect of it. It's got a financial aspect of it. And it's got an administrative aspect of it. And the good news is that not one person is good at all for. I don't care who you are. You could be somebody who has who has a multi-million pound business, but you're gonna discover that you are not good at all the aspects of, of your business. There are certain individuals that are better at running your organization, that one aspect of it anyway, than you are. 
The focus of a true social enterprise leader, and if you're running a business, truly you're a leader. You need to go out, even if you're a small social enterprise that turns over 2,000 pounds a year or 5,000 or 10, 20,000 pounds a year, you will still need a team of people to work with. There are certain work that you do that you are going to need a team of people around you to ensure that the work goes smoother and it's better delivered to your beneficiaries. Otherwise, you're going to remain a struggling and an enterprise or a struggling business. What am I talking about? It could be that you want to start marketing your business and you need somebody who is good on social media. Maybe you're not good on social media or as good on social media. Maybe you're not good at using Canva. Canva is a good thing, by the way. But <laughs> maybe you're not as fluent working on Canva as someone else. You've got to get somebody else to do it. I mean, for example, I can build a website and I've built a few websites in my time. I'm not really great at doing it, but I can actually build a website. I, I know my way around WordPress to build a website. I've done it in the past. But if you go onto our website today, which is School of Social Sustainability, .org. I'll say that again, School of Social Sustainability.org. Look at it right there. You will discover that it's such a beautiful website. And I did not build that. I had to employ somebody who knew exactly what they were doing and they built the website. That's why it works the way it does. That's why it looks the way it does because it's part of the complementary skills that I'm talking about. Maybe you have to accept that you're not good at selling. And I'm telling you that selling is part of running a social enterprise. For example, there are certain days that I have to make phone calls. I have to make cold calls. I call it my cold call days. And sometimes I'm not necessarily looking forward to doing it, but I've got to do it. Because I know that sometimes making cold calls does bring in business. I've had a client that I, uh, that I attracted from one of my cold calls. And she not only became one of my biggest clients, she also referred me to other clients that end up coming in and adding value to our business. And I think to myself, oh my goodness, if I did not make that one cold call to that woman, how would I have had all this other business over the past few months? So cold calling works. I'm just saying that maybe you're not good at selling. Maybe you ought to get someone else who is better at selling than you are. You're going to have to do that. Maybe you're not good at administration. Oh my God. And administration is part of what makes your business works. I remember being told the story of a social enterprise. They were really good at business in Sweden at the time. They were, they were really getting a lot of work done. They were servicing a lot of companies. I think they were in the recycling business and they were recycling so much material. They were being called from all over the world to uh, repair certain chairs and, and tables and they were really good at it. And they had the work, they, had, they were charging enough money. But guess what? They didn't have money to pay their staff. And when somebody checked, why are we not, why, how, comes, how comes our bank account is empty? Why do we have money? We're, we, we are business from prestigious organizations around the world. We've, we're, we're charging enough. We're, in fact, we're charging more than we should, but the money is coming. They're agreeing to pay. You know what they discovered? They were not sending out their invoices. <laughs> so they had a stack of invoices that needed to have been emailed that they could get paid and those emails, those stack of invoices remained in somebody's box. They were not sent. So of course, they had no cash flow and thank goodness they spotted the mistake. But that is an administrative error. You might say, well, that's the leader's fault. But the leader doesn't know everything. That's the point I'm making. You've got to employ somebody who knows what they're doing in administration to ensure that that part of it is also sorted. So it is the true social enterprise leader's job to develop what I call a A-team. In other words, the 
quality that you need to have is one of a team builder, a, a team builder. And then finally, the last point I want to make. A true social enterprise leader or one of the five qualities you need to have is one that consistently develops. One is that one who is consistently developing. Somebody who vigorously pursues personal growth. I've said this so many in so many places and I really like talking about it because it makes very good sense. It is this. The average CEO in the US reads around 66 books a year. The average person in the US reads an average of one book a year. And then we hear all these complaints and criticisms of some of the CEOs in America who are earning over a million pounds a year. Well, hang on a minute. If you read 66 books a year and those books relate to your profession, how good are you going to be? How much of an expert will you become? How much of a problem solver will you become if you read those many books a year? And if you do that over five years, just think, just imagine, just imagine for a second, you're reading 66 books a year for five years. I don't know, that's over 300 books, right? Am I correct? Those are no maths. That's over 300 books that you've read. How different would you become if you do that? You know, I was, I was, I was thinking about someone, uh, Bet David, who has read over a thousand books. He's read over a thousand books. And if you go on his, if you go on his YouTube page, he's got like millions of subscribers. He does really big uh, uh, interviews with very famous people. Why, why would he not do that? Look at the number of books he has read. Look at the number of ideas he would have. Think of the number of ways he has in his arsenal to solve problems. If you are constantly growing, you're going to discover that you're attracting higher quality individuals, you are attracting higher quality clients, which also means that you are attracting higher quality income, which also means that with the amount of money you have, you can change the world because you have the finance to do so. You know what? You cannot change the world simply because you are very social and you are committed to see a social change in the world. It's not going to happen. That's not the only way it's going to happen. That's good. That's your passion side. But then you need to develop your business side so that you can truly make an impact and have a real change in the lives of people around the globe even because you have the financial means to do so. But if you're not growing, if you're not thinking, if, if, if you're not growing, and guess what? <laughs> if you are, as a leader are not growing, your staff are not growing. And if your staff are not growing and you are not growing, where would the business be in just a few years time? Uh, it could just be extinct. And there's, a, there's one Bible verse that says that uh, if anything is absolute and aging, it will soon disappear. And it's so true. If your business is obsolete, meaning it's not having new ideas, it's not having inputs of new ideas into it constantly, consistently, over a period of time, it's going to be obsolete. I guess you don't want to be like that. You want to be one person that is vigorously pursuing personal growth. So let me recap on the five qualities you need to develop or five qualities that make a true social enterprise. Number one, you are passionate about the target group that you want to impact. Number two, you are developing your business mindset. And number three, you are innovative, creative. Number four, you're building a successful A team. And number five, you are consistently developing yourself personally. All right. Thank you so much for spending time with us. This is a Sunday. We're recording this. Thank you so much for uh, spending time with us on this wonderful Sunday evening in the UK, actually night <laughs> in the UK. It's great to have you along. Post your comments in the comment box. Actually, 
What are you struggling with as a social enterprise? When, we, when you talk about being a leader in your social enterprise, are you having certain types of struggles? We would like to know. And how have you planned to resolve them? Or do you need help resolving them? Do put in the comment box. I'm sure that as other people pick it up, and I also will go in and have a look at it, and will reply and respond to all the comments that I find in the comment box below. Either you're watching us on any platform in which you find this video. All right, then, I look forward to catching up with you another time. If you want to get in touch with us, you find our number and our uh, email in the description box. The quickest way to do it is to contact us via WhatsApp, and we'll come back to you very soon. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I'm going to leave you once again with the slide that captures the five characteristics that a true social enterprise leader has. Thank you.